Good afternoon, Nerd Fam, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. We are midway through our two days of coverage here at Black Hat, and my goodness, have we had some interesting guests. My name is Savannah Peterson. Very excited to be joined by some super brilliant lads today on the show. Yevgeny and Nadir, thank you so much for taking the time. Great to be here, Savannah, and in general, like we love Black Hat, and every time it's such a great experience, so much energy, so many great meetings, so much going on, and great to be here. There really is an energy at this show in the community. You, you mentioned 13 years in a row at Black Hat. You've been here for nine a year. What, what does the show mean for Armis? I noticed you've got brand activations all over. I saw you've rented out the cafe down there. I see, what you, I see what's going on. I, I'm picking up what you're throwing yeah. down. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about why this community is so important. Yeah, because it's everybody's coming here from customers, partners, and also when we talk about customers, it can be CISOs, CIOs, but also the practitioners. So a lot of good conversations in terms of the usage of the Army's products, new products that uh, we, are, we are selling at, at Army's, new products that are being leveraged by customers across the board. A lot of conversation between customers to customers, actually. We had uh, just Hyping like- you up, I hope. Yeah, uh, yeah. just, just uh, one hour ago, we had, we had a chat together with a great customer that was sharing about like great experience with, with another customer that came by about like from asset management to vulnerability prioritization and how it was something like so much value and like board of directors are looking exactly at all the Army's reports and it's so exciting to see. How I just got to ask a personal question on that note because that's probably a magical thing to walk up and over here. How does it make you feel as CEO? Feel like a lot, a lot of great, great energy. There's nothing better about hearing a customer how much value yeah. he or she gets from the Army's product. Nothing better. Yeah, I mean that's just music to your ears. It's good. I can feel how good it makes you feel just sitting next to you right now. Okay, my favorite stat from the day was when I looked at your most recent press release this morning. Explosive growth is an understatement. You have doubled ARR in less than 18 months, which is insane. Every company wants to do that. How did you do that? Why, why is the growth happening so quick right now since you've been around for so many years prior to this? Were you just waiting for this moment? Yeah, no, uh, I think it's a, it's a combination, a combination of like a lot of hard work mm -hmm. by, by our team and uh, and a lot of great demand, and that Armis is actually solving problems that are top priority for security organizations, for IT organizations across the board, and that we are also always listening to the customer, what they really need f from us. Our customer advisory board is a great organization that actually Nadir is doing so many great sessions there on like, what's the next also for Army? Not just the usage of the current products, but also what's next for Armies. And this is how development is really directed to actual products. We are expanding to new products that our customers need them yesterday. And a lot of effort is going into that. With, with the speed of innovation, both on the nefarious actor side as well as on, on our you know, good acting side, I think, I, I can't even imagine how quickly you have to work. Nadir, how, what does that feedback loop look like for you within the community? How are you getting that information? And I mean, given how successful you are right now, how are you staying one step ahead or at least in step with everything that's moving so fast? Well, I think uh, Yevgeny uh, mentioned the whole listening. Like it's uh, amazing how, how much listening can take you far. Uh, but I think also louder for the folks in the back, just in general <laughs> in the world. I yes, feel like listening. Yes, yes. Could listening be. Uh, really, really helps. Uh, but also, I think that uh, we uh, we manage to build uh, a foundational critical element that we can expand on quite a bit. And I think through the guidance of all of these customers and partners, um, we've been able to tackle areas that before were considered areas that are just extremely difficult, if not impossible, to tackle. Uh, Give me some examples. Uh, you know, how many CISOs out there feel that they have a good handle, a kind of a good asset inventory of everything? Check, we can do that. How many of them feel like uh, they can actually do effective vulnerability management uh, and actually tackle all of the critical exposure that they have, all the different yeah. findings? These are all difficult problems to tackle, but that we're able to do very effectively. And it shows in our growth. It shows in the success of the company. It shows in the trust uh, that all of these organizations are willing to put in us, which is uh, a truly humbling experience, but also something that we're very proud of um, in building this company. I love hearing that. And they're obviously proud of it as your customers if they're bragging about their experience to other customers. I mean, my goodness, talk about the best word of mouth marketing ever. 
Let's talk about how AI has factored in to this whole landscape for y'all. I can imagine it's been an interesting adjustment, and you also have an, an offering, Armacentrics. Tell me about that. Well, I think uh, AI, we all understand that it's kind of revolutionizing everything that we're doing. It's uh, revolutionizing both the uh, attackers, or let's say the bad guys, uh, but it's also mm -hmm. revolutionizing uh, the, the solutions and the things that uh, the good guys or the defenders can provide. Uh, for us, it's been uh, huge. I think that the entire platform has always had uh, a heavy dose of uh, well, machine learning and AI, but I think ever right. since the last couple of years and uh, how much uh, generative AI uh, and generally all the uh, usage and all the adoption of that has uh, really pushed forward the entire platform. Anything from uh, being able that. to yeah, anything from being able to um, query and understand and uh, uh, understand the data coming back from Armis in a much better way, but also uh, automation, uh, remediation, lots of different things that come from this um, is completely changing the landscape of both our products as well as what our customers are doing. I hadn't put two and two together here, which sounds silly. I'll call it a blonde moment. But the, your growth, your recent explosive growth, obviously Gen AI, those timelines are very kind of in parallel. Do you think that that has accelerated the adoption or at least the awareness of the needs for your solution in the market? I think it has, uh, very much so. But I also think that uh, in part, it coincides also with the explosive growth of cyber attacks as well. Uh, Gen AI is uh, increasingly being used by attackers and so jump-starting the entire industry. But also um, on our end, I think that uh, the usage of Gen AI and uh, how much it can help teams be that much more efficient, that much more effective and scalable mm -hmm. is huge. How much of your, I, I think that's so important, how much of your role is educating your customers on even the types of risks that might be emerging in the new landscape? I think in the beginning it was, it was much more, but the more, the more years pass and uh, what we see across our five products right now, that all these areas from the asset management, what Gartner would call CASM, OT security, medical device security, vulnerability prioritization, remediation, active threat intelligence, this is, those areas when our teams are arriving to speak to customers, those are all top priority. This is something that there is a project on, on the way or at some point, this is, or something is ongoing, always. This is, imagine that like those are the most critical environments. Imagine distribution centers, imagine airports, ports, utilities, like the green. Critical in, infrastructures exactly. what you're talking about. Yes. Those, are, those are areas <clears throat> that are the most important to the board of directors. It's not just another document that somebody lost. It's about <laughs> operations. Right. It's about operations. If one distribution center goes down, it's hundreds of millions that the organization would lose. If a grid goes down, if an airport goes down, imagine what, what's I happening. I mean, just ask Delta. Yeah, that's, uh, this, these are the areas that are the, the most critical, the most critical assets that are there in, in, in those environments. And these are the problems that we are solving. Let's talk about hospitals. Hospitals, it's the area if, if medical devices go down or are not protected, same. When we talk about asset management, how can you do any effective security program if you don't know what you have? across everything, every single asset, whether virtual, physical, cloud, code, OT, IoT, anything. If you don't have it, you cannot run an effective security program. So the way we are also expanding by product, as I said before, is also about customer demand. Customer demand and what are like top priorities for organizations to make their security program much more efficient, more value, more value to the, to the board of directors, et cetera. Well, and ensuring that the end user customer who might not even know about all the hard work you do doesn't have a, a gap in their positive customer experience. I mean, when these things happen, all eyes are on that company and, yeah. and it's a huge deal. I'm curious in terms of your approach, how much is defensive versus offensive security? How are you toggling that? Because I feel like it's things increase in speed and then there's also, but you want to be in front of it. How do you toggle that in terms of a product development and feature creep? Well, I think for us, obviously, we focus entirely on the defensive side, but it is about uh, being a few steps ahead uh, from yeah. any attackers or any offense. I think the good news is, and kind of going back to your comment about AI, is that uh, 
AI on the defensive side always has uh, one huge advantage over attackers, which is a home court advantage and uh, the data advantage of knowing exactly how your environment looks like if you're able to capitalize on it. So we try to make that advantage count as much as possible, uh, help the teams that day in, day out need to handle all of these different uh, security incidents, mm -hmm. uh, do their work much faster, have a SOC team, for instance, know exactly and immediately what is uh, the asset they're looking at, who owns it, who's using it, whose throat to choke, uh, if you will, <laughs> on the problem yeah, at yeah. hand. Uh, but do all of that in an effective manner to support their role. Uh, they have hard jobs, and uh, being able to support them in that fashion, being able to give them a 360 view of everything they need, that's what we're in business for. I love that. Well, and there's so many different legacy systems. There's silos. There's all these little pockets of knowledge and data throughout organizations that I'm sure you're tying together into that, that layer of observability. What do you, what's your most poignant advice for companies trying to navigate the cybersecurity landscape right now? Because it's a little chaotic. There's a lot, definitely a lot of companies. Yeah. A lot of companies, and uh, you see more and more always. Yeah. I think the key is, like to really focus on solving real problems. Mm -hmm. Real problems that are top priority for an organization and always do that validation again and again and again with different types of companies, different size, sizes of companies, different verticals. Always go again and validate and validate and validate all the time and always question yourself. Make, make sure that you're solving that like real, real, problems for, for the customer, that's something like is, is top priority. This is something that if you don't do that, sometimes like you, you fall in love in, 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 in the product but and not listening enough to the customer. This is something that at every stage, whether it's like 500K in revenue, 10 million, 50 million, 100. 200 million. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you must always keep thinking like that, keep listening to, to the customer and continue to make sure that you're solving something that is top priority. Absolutely, and and I like that. Kind of what I'm hearing from you is, you know, don't get too comfortable. Yeah, exactly. When you're back on your heels, you're not paying attention to the cybersecurity landscape. Never, in, in my opinion, whether from uh, from the customer perspective and what what are you solving, but also from a competitive perspective. Absolutely, you can never feel comfortable. If if you will feel comfortable, so, somebody will will actually go and beat you, and you need to always always be. Cautious, always think how you are ahead, 18 months ahead on the product, and this is how armies across all our products, not just as a platform, we're making sure that in each product, our product is 18 months ahead of the competition. And this is something that we always really push our product team. Oh, and that's why you're doubling ARR every 18 months, just like that. What's yes. next then on the product yes. development cycle? Yeah, I love it, that, that was, that was yes. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Nadir, what's next on the product development cycle? Well, I think that uh, uh, Armis is poised to really uh, fill in and take over this entire uh, very amorphous space of exposure management. Uh, I think it's. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that the world, in many ways, has, uh, uh, for the last decade or so, fallen in love with this concept of detection response. Uh, if you just put more detections in, you'll be able to catch, uh, you know, cyber threat actors uh, while they're in your system. And mm -hmm. I think that things have changed and things are flipping around quite a bit into the stance of it's not enough to just be reactive. You also have to proactively manage risk. And this is where Armis comes in. Armis is end-to-end, -end, uh, a system that allows you to both understand your environment, but also manage uh, and reduce risk within it proactively. And uh, not only is that a more cost-effective method, it's frankly a more effective method. Uh, if you don't have an mm -hmm. exposure in the first place, there's nothing to breach and no one's gonna be there in the first place. So I think right, that's, and that's what everybody wants. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And our roadmap is absolutely around that, around all the different product pillars that uh, Yipkeni mentioned before, and then mm -hmm. some, and being able to give teams a holistic view of their entire uh, risk and exposure space and how to manage that. I mean, it sounds like a holistic end-to-end -end solution, which is honestly, and it sounds like a real ally when it comes to helping folks navigate that potential exposure. Is there anything, Evgeny, I'm going to ask you that you wish your customer, potential customers knew about you that they don't know today? I think that uh, more about, uh, more and more about the platform that we are building, mm -hmm. that it's not just one A solution. A single solution, yeah. yeah some, some, sometimes more and uh, sometimes somebody knows you as, uh, okay, the IoT security, the OT security, right. the asset management. Yeah, and, some, yeah. and sometimes 
there are cases I would say that again the the only place that we are where we are losing is like where we are not invited to the dance and 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 this is this is the area that you know, I can say personally the most frustrating because we have an amazing solution in each of the uh, product suites but sometimes like oh they're uh, IoT security and their asset management, like, okay, on the vulnerability prioritization, they just didn't think to, to invite us, and sometimes you come uh, later. So, like, really about our, our cyber exposure man management platform and the five super competitive and AI-driven products that, uh, so everybody is aware of those capabilities, and, uh, you know, we will work hard to, to show every customer that we have the best product that will bring the best value. I love that. Well, first of all, I hope they're watching, so they saw that now. And you're invited to any dance party that I'm at, <laughs> and, and hopefully all of the future dance parties of your customers. I have one final question, and I would love for you both to answer it. Nadir, I'm going to start with you. What, you're, you know, you're both black hat veterans, and obviously been working on Armist for a while. What do you hope to be able to say next year that you can't yet say at this year's show? Well, first of all, that we doubled again. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> obviously, in 12 months this time, instead of 14 or 18. We keep challenging Love ourselves. that. Um, I would say that uh, um, you guys kind of touched on this in the beginning, that uh, there's a very special vibe uh, to Black Hat. I don't know if it's the um, desert theme or just the fact that uh, uh, people are much more chill and casual, and it's very fun to talk to a customer, not just through a Zoom, but uh, over a beer, or over kind of a... Amen, brother. Ex yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I think that uh, um, every year we come here, we see our team, we see uh, the dozens of different people who you know, make this a success and the hundreds behind them kind of around the world. Yeah. We see all the different uh, customers and partners here. Uh, we see uh, all the people sort of assemble either at the Hazel Lounge uh, where we're at or all anywhere else. I know, I saw it going in the elevator. I was like, exactly. we need to stop by there later today. I think just seeing that much more of that, that exponential growth of that uh, is, is truly the most rewarding piece of this entire experience. Hmm. That was so sincere and authentic, I actually believe you. <laughs> you have Jenny, what would you like to be able to say? Uh, you said that yeah. <laughs> already everything, but I would say that it's again to feel that next year we've made again huge progress across the board. Whether when we talk about revenues, about customer satisfaction, about the products, the amount of products and also the quality of the products. And and again, also like I would say can measure the buzz around the, yeah. around the company. And this is something that we also measure. It's not <clears throat> numbers, mm -hmm. but it's also like how you feel. That when you hear and people talk and think about, about Armis is, again, a super leading platform. And uh, what we are working super hard here to make this as a generational business, this is something that uh, I really want everybody to, to see and think this way. I love it. Well, you've convinced me sitting here today. So great job. Yevgeny Nadir, congratulations on the absolutely explosive growth, obviously reflective of your hard work and the great product that you've built. I really appreciate you all taking the time on what's a very busy, vibey week for you to come hang out with me. Thanks. Yeah, thank you <laughs> so much. much. It was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. And thank all of you for tuning in to our live coverage here at Black Hat in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for cybersecurity coverage.